Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. Queensland drivers are again feeling the pain at the petrol pump. Some servos inflated prices close to $1.80 a litre. And the RACQ says that's highway robbery. These are some of the highest petrol prices we've seen. Motorists aren't happy. I think 150 is the top that I'd pay at the moment. The RACQ went further, accusing petrol companies of price gouging. They're taking advantage of us after the recent Saudi drone strike. We did expect the prices to be high at the top of this peak, but nothing like this. Prices began rising last night and the trend continues. 7-Eleven moved six sites up to 169 cents per litre. Coles Express bumped four sites to 173.9, while Caltex has the highest at just under $1.80. The motoring body says we should boycott the high prices. They're taking motorists for a ride and uh, really, if you fill up there, they're robbing you blind. Despite soaring prices, the irony is that some servos have dropped their prices to around the $1.30 per litre mark. If motorists check for cheaper prices, it could save them up to $25 every time they fill up. With petrol prices that QT checked today ranging from under $1.40 to under $1.80 per litre. The majority of petrol prices remain on the lower end, but drivers are being savvy. Sometimes I might get a small amount and then I will uh, move on to try and find something a little bit cheaper. Stella Reeve, QUT News. There are now formal moves to impeach US President Donald Trump. The House of Representatives is investigating whether he's undermined the Constitution, and that inquiry could affect world stock markets. Donald Trump's presidency may be under threat. I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. The announcement follows reports the president used foreign aid from the Ukraine to smear political rival Joe Biden. Members of the American public say the impeachment is well overdue. He's done a lot of things that uh, are not not sound and he, he needs to be held accountable for them and it, it's about time. But others disagree with the move. I think the impeachment's ridiculous. There's n Run the government. Do what you're supposed to do. House Republicans have also criticised the investigation. Our job is to legislate, not to continue to investigate something in the back when you cannot find any reason to impeach this president. The president took to Twitter to air his frustrations calling it a witch hunt. He said it was business as usual at the UN General Assembly in New York and went on to blast both China and Iran on trade. No responsible government should subsidize Iran's bloodlust. As long as Iran's menacing behavior continues, sanctions will not be lifted. They will be tightened. The investigation sets up a dramatic clash between Congress and the White House in the run-up to the 2020 presidential campaign. Hannah Burstow, QUT News. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has urged Australians not to be too anxious over climate change. His response follows scathing criticism of world leaders from a 16-year-old Swedish activist. Greta Thunberg delivered a powerful speech at the UN Climate Summit, which the Prime Minister chose not to attend. But the Australian PM is calling for context and perspective in the climate debate. I don't want our children um, having anxieties about these issues. Scott Morrison has acknowledged how deeply activists feel on this issue, but he remains confident Australia's climate change targets will be reached. Young children growing up in Australia should feel great about Australia's future. I do. Meanwhile, US President Donald Trump has been talking to the UN too. He delivered a wide-ranging speech and reiterated his decision not to respond to more trouble in the Middle East. I commend the restraint that the president is showing on the issue of Iraq. Like Scott Morrison, Trump also warned China was no longer just a developing nation and had to meet the rest of the global market on a level playing field. Sam Wilson, QUT News. Brisbane Council has begun another war on disease-carrying mosquitoes and it has a new weapon in the fight. It's an annual event to stop the spread of mosquitoes and the possibility of deadly disease. And to help, they have got a new all-terrain vehicle to move more effectively through mozzie territory. 
This is a vehicle that costs around $68,000, but it's a good investment to make sure that we can get in and treat those hard to reach areas without damaging the environment. The council will be targeting 2,500 sites between now and May next year. They're planning to spend $5.2 million on the project, but say the budget is flexible. Uh, the budget is there based on previous expenditure, but ultimately we will respond to the conditions uh, in Brisbane at any given time. The council will also be aerial spraying throughout the summer. With the council battling mosquitoes in the wetlands, residents are being urged to help out by tipping out stagnant water and checking their properties for potential mozzie breeding grounds. Pot plant sources, um, rainwater tanks need screening, any, any water that stands there for about seven days will breed mosquitoes. Dengue mosquitoes aren't currently a problem in the southeast, and the council wants to keep it that way. Jacob Funk, Huge E News. Brisbane residents now have information about the city's public transport literally at their fingertips. A virtual reality hub showing how Cross River Rail will affect Brisbane has opened up in the city. You can explore the changes in city transport since 1819 and what it will look like in the future. A fly-through room takes you into Brisbane's first ever underground. The only child of a Sydney woman has been charged with her murder 18 years ago. Police allege she staged a break-in to cover a murder, motivated by greed. The 45-year-old mother of three allegedly inherited the family home. She was apparently stunned when detectives handcuffed her while she was putting out rubbish so long after the event. They were forced to do away with single-use bags, but now Australia's supermarkets are battling plastic pollution enthusiastically. One of them has collected the equivalent of the world's circumference in waste. Retailing giant Coles says its customers have increased their recycling by 32% in a year. And Kenmore locals are better at it than most. The community in Kenmore have um, raised or saved uh, two and a half tonnes of plastic um, that has been diverted from landfill into recycling. They've recycled two and a half tonnes of unwanted soft plastic. Australia-wide, the total of soft plastic, including bags and wrappers left in the recycle bins, was 900 tonnes. Many products on the shelves are wrapped in soft plastics. The efforts of customers to recycle this packaging help to divert this rubbish from landfill. It's material that can't be recycled in the normal way and once processed, eventually ends up as furniture, playground equipment and even road materials. And I just want to say to our uh, Kenmore community, please continue to, to do this because it's a real important cause. Shoppers say they are happy to have somewhere to put the plastic rubbish. Oh, it's excellent. It's excellent. There's nowhere else to take them. Yeah, great. I hadn't noticed it before. Brisbane residents have also become much better at using the reverse vending machines at recycling centres. Customers can uh, bring their used beverage containers uh, in and use the reverse vending machines behind us here uh, to redeem their 10 cent deposit on all of those containers. But recyclers say more people can still get involved. Kristen Camp, QUT News. Looking again at our main story, Brisbane petrol prices on the rise due to school holidays and price gouging. And still to come, Britain's PM urged to resign over a constitutional crisis. Britain's Supreme Court has ruled that Prime Minister Boris Johnson suspended Parliament illegally. Many opponents are now calling for the PM to resign as the Brexit deadline approaches. A scathing verdict from the UK's highest court. The court is bound to conclude, therefore, that the decision to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament was unlawful because it had the effect of frustrating or preventing the ability of Parliament to carry out its constitutional functions without reasonable justification. Boris Johnson found guilty of misleading the Queen to suspend Parliament unlawfully. The PM, however, defiant. Obviously, this is a verdict that uh, we will respect and uh, we respect the judicial process. I have to say I strongly disagree uh, with what the justices have found. Uh, I don't think that uh, it's right. The opposition leader wasted no time and says Johnson will be held to account when Parliament returns. This unelected Prime Minister should now resign. 
and it appears members of the public agree. Johnson out! Johnson out! But the PM shows no signs of backing down. But I think the most important thing is we get on and deliver Brexit on October the 31st. The Speaker of the House is now recalling Parliament. Specifically, I've instructed the House authorities to undertake such steps as are necessary to ensure that the House of Commons sits tomorrow. Hannah Burstow, QUT News. Pakistani-controlled Kashmir has been hit by a deadly earthquake. The 5.8 tremor killed at least 20 people and injured 300 more. The earthquake shook North Pakistan yesterday afternoon, destroying buildings and cracking roads. The quake struck near the city of New Mirpur. People ran out of buildings, barely escaping as the structures collapsed behind them. The tremor ravaged the city, with cracks in roads large enough to swallow cars. Pakistani army troops and medical support teams were dispatched into the area. The chairman of Pakistan's National Disaster Management Authority says tents, blankets, kitchen sets and medical kits have been distributed to the affected people and rescue operations were expected to take days. The last major earthquake in Kashmir happened in 2005, killing more than 80,000 people. The territory has been in dispute between India and Pakistan since partition in 1947, causing two wars between the countries. Federica Wallamson, QT News. A fuel tanker has exploded in Mali's capital, killing six people and wounding 46 more. It happened during a traffic accident in the city centre. Apparently, the driver lost control and the vehicle crashed on its side. Officials are still investigating the cause, but at this stage, they have made no connection to terrorist actions elsewhere in the country. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's tour of Africa has rolled through Cape Town. Their full day of festivities coincided with Heritage Day in South Africa. The Duke and Duchess's visit to British High Commissioner Nigel Casey's residence was in celebration of youth, community and civil society leaders of Cape Town. Prince Harry says it's a privilege to bring his young family to Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, as, as the uh, High Commissioner said, for introducing us to, to Cape Town, especially to my wife who hasn't been to, to this part of Africa before. The Royals presented the Points of Light Award to outstanding individual volunteers in recognition of their efforts to making a change in their community. The couple also met with local Muslim and Christian community leaders upon visiting South Africa's oldest mosque, the 225-year-old Arwell Mosque. Harry and Meghan ate with locals from one of Cape Town's former slave enclaves, as local street performers celebrated the public holiday. Harry travels alone on Thursday to Botswana to continue his African tour, as Meghan and baby Archie return home. Sam Wilson, QUT News. It is out with your typical runway and in with the trees. Well-known designer Dior has made a statement at Paris Fashion Week. Dior's spring 2020 collection debuted with an unexpected twist. With the world calling a climate crisis, the fashion house lined their runway with trees, which will be replanted around Paris. The garden has no an idea only about uh, uh, decorative things, but also something that could be help uh, to have a future. The collection featured wildflowers and flowing fabrics. But the message was the highlight of the day. In fashion, uh, are not only beautiful clothes, but uh, is speaking about is also to speak about um, gender, about cultural appropriation, about environment. Guests agreed the collection was fit for the world's eco warriors. And just the whole aesthetic of it was really amazing, and it had a certain nature aspect to it, which was great. And Paris Fashion Week itself aims to be greener by 2020, eliminating single-use plastics in all shows. Pagan Blight, QUT News. A Redcliffe man was rescued alive but critically ill after a unit fire in the early hours of the morning. Emergency services managed to get him out of the complex as his unit was engulfed in flames. No one else was hurt in the 3am blaze. A 19-year-old P-plate driver is facing months of court and a possible jail term after allegedly running over a scooter driver. 
The 41-year-old victim was a delivery courier. The two drivers collided at the West Sydney intersection. The 41-year-old rider hit by the car died at the scene, despite the efforts of witnesses and paramedics to help. Extremely confronting for all emergency services. Security cameras captured the 90-year-old youth driver allegedly speeding while approaching a T intersection. It's claimed he went straight for it and hit the scooter rider who was heading the other way. Our crews did an exceptional job uh, here this evening, um, but like I said, despite their best efforts, uh, the gentleman succumbed to his injuries. The car involved went on to crash into steel gates. Witnesses were stunned by the accident. I just saw the body when I was walking past. A bunch of medics and a bunch of police around the body. The pit plate driver was given mandatory drug and alcohol tests and was later charged with dangerous and negligent driving, occasioning death. Federica Williamson, QT News. While some AFL players have been partying hard at the end of the season, at least two are ruining their bad luck. They're struggling to overcome injury before the grand final. And an NRL player is in the same boat. Two Greater Western Sydney Giants players are training hard to prepare for Saturday's blockbuster. Lockie Whitfield is quickly recovering after having his appendix removed, but Stephen Coniglio faces greater challenges after knee surgery. We've just got to make sure that his knee's 100% safe. Um, we've got him for long term, we're wrapped in that. More injuries in NRL as Rabideau's player James Roberts has sat out of training before this week's preliminary grand finals. And fellow player Sam Burgess has apologised for his comment that the NRL judiciary was a kangaroo court. Yes, I do flirt with the line from playing the game. Of course, that's, that's me. In lighter news, an AFL team has headed for the pub for Wacky Wednesday. Geelong narrowly missed out on the grand final, so ended their season with a bang. I'm looking forward to the day. It's always a great chance to have a beer with the boys. Kickoff for the big game at the MCG, Richmond v the Giants, is at 2.30 Saturday afternoon. Pagan Blight, QUT News. The weather details are next with Laura Daly. Then, something definitely not for arachnophobics. Hello, what's the weather doing in Brisbane? Well, it was cloudy most of the day. Those predicted morning showers just did not happen. In fact, it was cloudy right around the southeast. Ipswich, the hottest centre today, reaching the high 20s. But look at the sunny coast, 20 degrees overnight, that's mid-summer lows. If you're heading interstate, it's a mixed bag around the nation. Morning showers for Sydney, Canberra, early fog and a three degree minimum. Cloudy in Melbourne, Hobart and Perth, 22 the top in the west. And of course, sunny and warm in the top end. Not a whole lot of sunshine in the Sunshine State for Thursday. Expect showers or cloud cover pretty well right down the coast from Cairns to Bundaberg. Sunny out west though, 33 degrees, the top in both Mount Isa and Longreach. Looking at Moreton Bay, it should be quite good for boaties. 10 to 15 knot northeasterly winds and seas below a metre. The sun will set tomorrow at 5.45. If you're heading to the beach, there could be morning showers on the Goldie, 23 the top there, a couple of degrees higher on the Sunshine Coast and plenty of cloud cover. What's ahead for Brisbane? More clouds and possible showers tomorrow, a 60% chance of showers Friday and cloudy but hot Saturday. Even with those clouds, make sure to use skin protection when you're out and about. That's the weather for now. Back to you, Jade. If you're afraid of spiders, you should turn away. No, not really. These ones are mostly behind glass in a new exhibition at the Queensland Museum. Spiders might be scary to some, but the museum is inspiring a new generation of arachnologists. Spiders, the exhibition, will give visitors a chance to get up close and personal with all sorts of creepy crawlies. It explores different parts of spider ecology, as well as presenting live feeding demonstrations. We just want people to understand them better, understand their role in the ecosystem, what they do, how they live. They've got amazing life cycles. The expo has virtual reality activities. You can dance with a spider, hold a spider, even examine the insides of a spider using 3D scanning technology. The museum has already described more than 1,000 spiders, which is close to one third of all Australia's spiders. The exhibition will feature over 200 specimens, including this, the golden orb spider. 
It will also feature 12 other live species. And some budding arachnologists even dressed up for today's sneak peek. I like the red that was fine. They're really fascinating actually. The exhibition officially opens on December 6th. Elizabeth Neal, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.